Well, welcome back to worship at Emmanuel Lutheran Church. Uh, we had a problem. Am I live again? Are you on the phone with Debbie? Okay, we're good. Hopefully we're back on it. Looks like we're back on it. Our end, I apologize for that. Maybe that is the Holy Spirit's way of telling us, yes, I am behind this new video system that you're going to get. It is Pentecost, and we are ready to read the gospel acclamation. Uh, or not the gospel acclamation, the gospel. The holy gospel on this Pentecost is from St. John, the 20th chapter. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord. As I sat and wrote this sermon, I was filled with deep sorrow, disgust, and anger. I was writing a sermon for today, for Pentecost, a grand celebration for the church. It's her birthday. It's our birthday. The day Jesus breathes into us the Holy Spirit, as we just heard in the Gospel of St. John. The day God sends the Holy Spirit, God's breath, like a violent wind and dancing flames, onto us, giving us the power to unite people as we heard from Mike in the reading of Acts. Pentecost is the day Jesus' promise that he will be with us always is fulfilled. Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit takes residence within ourselves to guide us in God's truth and love the day God united each and every one of us into a giant family. For the Holy Spirit joins us together to Jesus' body, each and every one of us wanted worthy, and deeply loved. Each and every one of us, different from each other, as an eye is to the knee, but each just as important and needed as the other. Pentecost, the day God united people as one and creates the church. People, not a building, but people chosen to love God, chosen to love one another, chosen to spread the good news of Jesus Christ by living lives that reflect Jesus' love, acceptance, and mercy. Pentecost, what a joyous celebration. 
and yet my heart hurts and my stomach churns as I watch how hateful, violent, and destructive we humans have become toward one another. I watch how we, God's beloved children, have lost seeing value, worthiness, and dignity in our fellow humans. Our desire for power and dominance, our fear of difference and scarcity, they don't look, they don't talk, they don't dress, they don't marry, they don't worship, they don't think, they don't even smell like I, we do. Thus, I, we must be afraid. They are after what I have, what I want, and there is not enough for everyone. The eyes and we's fall into a two-year-old's mentality and distinct lines between us and them are forged. And whoever is on the them side, we so easily and quickly strip away them's humanity. We no longer or maybe never did, see them as equals, as Holy Spirit formed family. We no longer see them as reflections of Jesus. Generation after generation of normalizing, socially accepting this device, the us turn a blind eye when the them are dehumanized, treated like ferocious animals to be caged or insects to be eradicated. With every passing day, tweets that are bullying, belittling, and threatening become normalized. And society cheers that abuse on. The schism between us and them becomes wider. It is Pentecost. We celebrate the love and solidarity God has with all God's beloved people through the work of the Holy Spirit. We celebrate the patchwork fabric, the breadth of inclusivity, the full expression of the body of Christ, which the church is celebrating the connectedness we share with all people, celebrating that we are one with each other through the work of the Holy Spirit. It is Pentecost, and we mock the work of the Holy Spirit by our hatred, by our complacency, by our silence, to the schism we perpetuate. Memorial Day evening, George Floyd, a 46-year-old black man, was brutally murdered by Minneapolis police officer Devika Chauvin, a white man. 
while three other police officers assisted. Police were called because Floyd allegedly had made a purchase with a county, counterfeit $20 bill. And as you already know, as the result of Mr. Floyd's brutal death, violence and destruction erupted in Minneapolis and protesters were enacted around the country. Friday morning, Pastor Ingrid Rasmussen of Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis posted a live stream of her community, which I shared on my own Facebook page and which I shared on the church's Facebook page. Pastor Ingrid was live around 8 o'clock in the morning, and the air was filled with smoke like a low-hanging fog from the riot fires Thursday night. As she walked through her community, she showed us the state troopers, the Minneapolis police, the National Guard, dressed in riot protective gear, standing in an impenetrable line, protecting the streets. A fire truck was behind this line as buildings were still smoldering. A total loss to fire and destruction. Buildings not boarded up fast enough. Pastor Ingrid walked past Holy Trinity Lutheran Church, which was spared major destruction. Though on one of their property pieces was spray painted hashtag BLM, short for Black Lives Matter. And she said the church thought they would keep it there. By the end of her live stream, Pastor Ingrid was in tears, and she told the congregation that this violence and destruction are symptoms of generations of inequality. She mentioned a poet, Langston Hughes, who wrote about the lives of African-American people in the early 1900s, and she mentioned a particular a poem, Harlem. What happens to a dream deferred? Does it dry up like a raisin in the sun? Or fester like a sore, then run? Does it stink like rotten meat? Or crust and sugar over like a syrupy sweet? Maybe it just sags like a heavy load. Or does it explode? We know the answer all too well. It explodes. Friday, ex-Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin was arrested and charged with third-degree murder and manslaughter for killing George Floyd. Once, as an illustration sermon about living out our convictions and the harshness we'll face when our convictions are countercultural. I use the photograph of NFL quarterback Colin Kaepernick kneeling during the playing of the national anthem to protest police brutality against black Americans. On the us side of the schism, Outrage with a knee would be taken, disrespecting a song, disrespecting patriotism. 
but not a peep of concern against the cruel treatment to another human being. This week, NBA player LeBron James posted a side-by-side photos on Instagram. Above the photo of handcuffed George Floyd being knee-necked by the police officer read this. The photo beside it with the heading is why the kneeling Colin Kaepernick. It is time we celebrated Pentecost, the birthday of the church, the Christ bond between all of God's beloved children, celebrating by closing the schism, us, them, by peacefully working for justice and no longer accepting the normalization of abusive rhetoric and systematic hate. It is time we celebrate Pentecost and allowed the Holy Spirit to work through you and through me, the church, for the common good. It's Pentecost. Let's begin celebrating. Amen. Amen. We sing our sermon hymn. Holy Spirit, Truth Divine, hymn number 398. to Christ, living together in trust and hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess our faith in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Call together in the Spirit's embrace, let us pray for the mending of God's world. After each prayer petition, I will say, Hear us, O God, and I ask that you respond with, Your mercy is great. We call on your spirit of unity, giving thanks for our different vocations. Activate and utilize the diverse gifts present in your church, that they reveal your love for all. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We call on your spirit of life, present in air, wind, humidity, storms, and oxygen in our atmosphere, breathing energy into all things. Heal with your breath the whole creation, especially those who struggle to breathe due to air pollution. Grant comfort and healing to those affected by all disasters, especially flooding, tornadoes, and earthquakes so they may come to know new life through you. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. We call on your spirit of righteousness. Wherever we as a people are divided, unite us, especially in Minneapolis and where racism prevails. Wherever we are prideful, humble us. Give each of us a heart for justice and empathy. Hear us, O oh God. Your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We call on your spirit of healing. Bless nurses, doctors, midwives, chaplains, counselors, and hospice workers as they care for those in need. Quell our fears over COVID-19. Heal those who are suffering from it and grant us wisdom to contain and prevent its hold on us. Grant courage and strength to the healthcare professionals. As the United States begins to open again, grant us desire to show love and respect to our neighbors. We pray for all who long for comfort, especially for those we name before you now in our hearts or spoken out loud. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We call upon your spirit of friendship. Surprise us daily with unexpected grace that we rejoice in every blessing you send. Hear us, O oh God, your, your mercy, mercy is, is great. great. We call upon your spirit of hope as you have led your saints in all times and all places, especially Elizabeth Crumb, George Floyd, and all victims of violence of hate. Stir in us the desire to follow the Holy Spirit's leading us from death to new life in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share the peace of Christ with one another. The peace of Christ be with you, Mike. Mike, the peace of Christ be with you always. 
During this time of social distancing, we continue to give God thanks and praise through our tithes and offerings of thanksgiving for the mission of the church, including the care of those in need. We invite you to mail your tithes and offerings of thanksgiving to Emmanuel. Sign up for automatic withdrawal through Simply Giving or give online through our website, luthwash.org. We now receive your tithes and offerings of thanksgiving. Holy Spirit, come abide within. May your joy be seen in all we do. Love enough to cover every sin in each thought and even Let us pray. God of goodness and growth, all creation is yours and your faithfulness as, as firm as the heavens. Water and word, wine and bread, these are signs of your abundant grace. Nourish us through these gifts that we might proclaim your steadfast love in our communities and in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our strength and our song. Amen. Let us give thanks for the word of God. After each prayer petition of thanksgiving, I will say, uh, for your word of life, O God, and we ask that you say, we give you thanks and praise. Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word, you give thanks. In fact, I don't have it in my book, so we'll have to, um, I have it cut out as, as um, so by your word for the life of God, we give you thanks and praise. Let us continue with the Lord's Prayer. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You are deeply loved children of God. You are the reflection of Christ to the world. Beautiful, wanted, cherished, and worthy children of God, receive God's blessing. Christ has no body but yours, no hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes in which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet in which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands in which he blesses all this world. Yours are the hands. Yours are the feet. Yours are the eyes. You are Christ's body. Christ has no body now on earth but yours. God, the creator, Jesus, 
the Christ, and the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, bless you and keep you in eternal love. Amen. Let us together sing our sending hymn, Spirit of Gentleness, verses 3 and 4. Spirit of Gentleness, which is hymn number 396. Thank you. 